11 days of high stakes, high intensity poker action culminates today with event number 12. The 100K where Michael Adamo, winner of event number 11, comes in with an overwhelming chip lead and a big dose of confidence as we hunt for the purple jacket. Welcome one and all to continuing coverage of the 2021 Poker Masters. As mentioned, it is the final table of the 100K, the granddaddy event number 12. From inside the PokerGo studio, here at Aria Resort and Casino in City Center, Ali Najad joined by Maria Ho and these five hopefuls. And it is quite a lot of hope that's going to be required for some of these shorter stacks coming into this final table. For Michael Adamo, it could be smooth sailing as it was yesterday in the 50K, in which he emerged victorious, taking down a nice haul of cash. And today, Maria, we break the $1 million payout barrier as first is worth 1.16 million, followed by 754, 464, 319, and of course, the $203,000 that is locked up by all five of these players, courtesy of the bursting of the money bubble. Yesterday, it was Adamo who busted Stephen Chidwick on the outside looking in, and here are the championship scenarios. Adamo win first or second, he takes the jacket. If Stanley Tang wins, it doesn't matter how Adamo does. He still takes the jacket. However, if either Makita Baziakuski, Alex Foxen, or Nick Petrangelo win, and Michael Adamo were to finish third or worse, they would win the jacket. So, um, especially during the World Series. And so what's it like being on the receiving end of that steely-eyed Alex Foxen glare? Yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely one of those people that really makes you feel a little uncomfortable when you're in a hand with him, mostly because of that stare. Well, you want to talk about uncomfortable. Patsy Akuski on this short stack. Just no wiggle room, has himself two sixes, and he is going to have to spin the wheel against Adamo, who asked for it all with Jack-10 on the button. Gentlemen, start your engines. Let's go racing. A coin flip. Five hundred and seventy-five thousand in the middle, and it means a whole heck of a lot more to Batsiakuski, who has his tournament life here at the final table on the line. And it's still good. Ace, king, deuce. Adamo, however, has two overs to the sixes and now the Broadway gut shot. Oh, oh. my goodness. Hell hath frozen over for those two sixes as the queen of clubs just nuts Adamo. No waiting. Makita draws dead and... We'll be drafting a check for $203,000, but. All in. All in. Adamo leaning, and now it is Tang's turn with King Queen to draw a line in the sand. And this is a pleasant development for Alex Foxen, who actually has a click less in chips. We King. And you know who he'll be rooting for. I had two. I had two kings. I had the other ones. Tang's got some fogging also, issues on that left lens morning. there. We might need to run some Rain-X out. <laughs> Open-ended straight draw for the Jack-9. A gutty for the King-Queen, but Tang doesn't need to get there. His hand is best right now. Just needs to fade Adamo's no 10 outs. No no nine. No. Oh. oh no, a, j a jack would not have been good. The nine on the turn King giving back. Adamo a pair. Far for the course it would seem though, at this point, not surprised at all. So gross, and now you need a king. Well, you need a jack, and neither show up on the river and 
back-to-back -back eliminations here at the final table. That's all she wrote for Stanley Tang, who finishes in fourth place. Good for $319,000. And Alex Foxen, just by being a spectator, has picked up over $200,000 more in prize money. Maybe it's not real denim. Maybe it's that jeggings oh, material. Ooh, comfy. Boy, that got you excited. I think it's 245. You know what you spent your pandemic wearing. So. Meanwhile, Foxen is actually going to ask for some Petrangelo bucks as he gets it all in with King 4, and Petrangelo got him in a bad way with King 7. But opportunities do exist. Not that I'll be able to identify them correctly, as we already established like during the Stanley forward. Wang <laughs> Adamo confrontation okay. earlier. There. Nine two. Pretty tight. How painful was it? <laughs> it looked painful. It painful. Here we go. Seven six deuce. Disaster for Alex Foxen. Can he pick up equity on the turn? Yeah, he he cannot and immediately sends his stack over to Petrangelo. Obviously, he needed some spins. Just the jacket. never yeah, was able yeah. to get anything going. And it's not just the 464 he picks up, which, by the way, is still out kicking the coverage, here. perhaps, given <laughs> how it looked when he came in. Back to back eliminations from Badzi Akuski and Tang. But the real story is grind. we know who our oh, yeah. poker master is. So Michael Adamo has sewn it oh, up. Hell. Well, Michael, with at least a second place finish today, had... you are assured of a Poker Masters Series Championship. That means $50,000 in bonus money, and that also means this purple jacket that I'm gonna put on you right now, and I will congratulate you as well. There we go. Looks good, it looks sharp, How, how's it feel? I'm surprised it fits actually, because I'm like, oh, I mean, you know, <laughs> Yesterday, you gave us a little bit of uh, planning time, I would ah, say. Ah, smart. What does this mean to you to be able to wear this purple jacket, to be able to win this series? Yeah, no, it's, it's really amazing. I actually didn't even think I'd be a chance. I only came for three events. Like I didn't know the point system would like make me a chance. But yeah, it's amazing uh, that I'm yeah able to get it. That's great. Does it does it give you a bit of a confidence boost that you can come in here, you can play against the best of the world, you win the 50k, and, and now you win this jacket? Oh yeah, it definitely gives me a lot of confidence. But um, I guess it's also quite a lot of luck in these in these tournaments. Sure. Like a lot of the players are very strong players. I respect a lot, and yeah, I'm just very fortunate the cards went my way as well. How much do you enjoy competing? with the best in the world. Oh, I love it. There's nothing uh, I guess the juice is flowing more, you know? Um, yeah, I love the competition. Thanks for the time, congratulations, and we'll let you compete some more in Heads Up Play. How's that nice. sound? Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Cheers. Congrats. Thanks. Holly. All right, so Michael Adamo has won the jacket, and he'll have his first chance to show it off as he squares off against Nick Petrangelo. For the over $1 million first place prize, 754 locked up by both of these guys, and that's how it's going to look going into heads up play. Nikki P is dangerous, though, Maria. One double, and he'll really be a threat. But, but Nick is a firm proponent of not psyching yourself out by doing so. He says that a lot of people will kind of subconsciously put themselves at a mental disadvantage by doing things like that. Instead, he's adopted a Throw caution to the wind, sort of don't think about the what ifs and get after it mentality. And it's clearly served him well as we see another pot. Two clubs, two deuces, and a seven advantage Adamo who outflops the king eight after defending his big. Petrangelo. Follows through for 50K with the king high. Yeah, he's got two overs. That king of clubs working in position. Pretty standard C-bet spot. Ten seconds. 165. 165. Oh, and a little more high variance line being taken this time by Adamo as he check raises to 165,000. Granted, the board texture is such that he isn't altogether concerned. Yeah, and it's definitely the type of texture where he would expect Petrangelo to follow up with a continuation bet at a pretty high frequency. And so because of that, definitely wants to charge those two over card type hands. 
Petrangelo with the two overs and the backdoor clubs called the extra 115,000 looking to tear one off and no improvement for him on this turn which is the 10 of hearts now a half a million in the middle. Michael a little bit concerned about the Petrangelo call, decides to play it safe with the check. A little bit of a balk there as Mickey P reached for the purples and then pumped the brakes. And I wonder what Michael's gonna make of that. That obviously was a noticeable deviation from what looked to be his intent. And you see some heavy breathing here as well, Maria. Yeah, Petrangelo also just <laughs> sizing up his stack, just thinking of you know, how much he should bet on the turn and how that would set him up on the river for what he would have back, especially taking into consideration a stack to pot ratio. Half pot, the number he comes with. Clearly it would appear that Petrangelo doesn't want to somehow try to show down this King High with this bet. This is now turning into a spot that Trangelo is wanting to get Adamo to fold some of his weaker value. Petrangelo paying off his time extension marker there after Adamo just calls the quarter million and now we've got one million in the middle and the club draw gets there on the end but not really a card outside of the clubs that is of concern to Adamo's seven. Trangelo with just about half pot back certainly could try to rep the flush, could try to rep some over pairs to the board. Certainly not the type of line where once he bets a turn, I would expect him to give up very often on the river. Yeah, it feels like his mind might have been made up to go with this one here. In particular, if this sort of card hits the river and he is moving all in, an instant expletive delivered by Adamo. He did not want to see that. Down, please. Seems as though he may very well have had Nick on a club draw, perhaps. Yeah, and there are definitely other hands other than a flush that Petrangelo could be betting to fall, for like value. <laughs> oh, you heard that. Yeah. That's not music to Nick's ears. I think I'm supposed to fold, but I don't like it. Ten seconds. Adamo just recognizing that this isn't necessarily a line where Petrangelo should have too many bluffs, especially considering the run out, that club coming off on the end. But Adamo. <sighs> he could win the whole tournament right <sighs> here if he clicks call and is correct as he is. And I think people who play with Adamo know that he doesn't love to fold. Seconds. And he certainly knows that Nick is very capable. So you put those two things together oh. and he does put it in. And that's it. Wow. A valiant effort from Nick Petrangelo to go with a line that seemed so I credible. Fall, I think it's on hand probably just a poker hand, I don't know. Sorry? I said that was probably just a poker hand. Hmm. Distill it to yeah. its simplest form and at the end Did of the day, they're all poker fold, hands. But you don't like it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you said the opposite. More focused on that specific hand than they are on the stuff you and I would be focused <laughs> on. $754,000 for second place. Going to Nick Petrangelo and that beautiful $1.16 million, along with the 50 k that's in the inner jacket pocket of that beautiful purple velvet. It is the Poker Masters trophy for Michael Adamo, presented by Zenny Eyewear. We had 29 entries originally. Stephen Chidwick, the bubble man, on the outside looking in. And it took just 19 hands, Maria, to get <laughs> ourselves to a winner. What are we going to do with the rest of the day? I mean, I have no idea. My flight is six hours from now. But listen, Michael Adamo came in today, found a way to close it out in even quicker fashion than he did yesterday. 
pretty incredible stuff. I mean, the Adominator he is. Yep, he has earned the moniker given to him by Brent Hanks, and I think it's going to stick. Why wouldn't it? That young man just took down more cash in three days than most people will in years at their day jobs. Yeah, but you heard the man. He needs to sleep. He'll get some time to rest in between now and the Super High Roller Bowl. Can't yeah, and so will you and I, yeah. as that concludes the Poker Masters and event number 12. Michael Adamo, your champion.